Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Anne Shen and I'm an illustrator, author, and designer based in Los Angeles. Today I'm covering one of the questions I get asked the most. How did you get started as an artist? I'm excited to share my story with you because I really carved my own path to becoming an artist. And no, I haven't been drawing since I could hold a crayon. I didn't take my first figure drawing class until I was 24. And I didn't start my professional art career until I was 27. And I didn't start working full time for myself as an artist until I was 30. Let's go back to where it began. I always loved drawing and art, much like many of us when we're small. Things went sideways when I was in kindergarten and we had an assignment about what we wanted to be when we grew up. I said I wanted to be an artist, but my immigrant mom, who thought she was doing the best for me, was horrified. She said, no, you can't be an artist or we'll have to support you for the rest of your life. As a first generation eldest daughter, I immediately had anxiety. So I asked her what I should be and she said, be a doctor. That lasted for a few years before it became apparent I wasn't much interested in work in the sciences. Growing up, I also loved to read and write stories. I wrote my first story on a typewriter my mom had and soon after wrote a novel length book on the family computer in seventh grade. I always loved writing and telling stories and soon that led me to studying creative writing, film and photography at UCSD. I love screenwriting and telling stories through visual mediums and I thought I would go into film until a summer internship for a movie producer made me realize I didn't want to work in Hollywood. I also always wanted to help the world, so I worked at a few nonprofit office jobs that made me miserable until a call with my mom reminded me that I always loved art. My boyfriend at the time, now husband, was studying animation at CalArts. He also went back to school in his mid-twenties to study art. I think it's really important to have people around you who expand your idea of what's possible in life. He was definitely one of those for me. So I decided to take an extension class at a local art school, shout out to Otis College of Art and Design, and fell in love with figure drawing. I was so nervous to take the class that I asked Ryan to take it with me and he did. A few more illustration classes in and I knew I wanted to make this a career. At the time, there were very few online resources for learning and definitely no social media. So I went the traditional route and went back to school for an illustration degree. I took a year to put together a portfolio and I was just gonna keep applying until I got in because that is how art schools work. However, I was very lucky after meeting with an admissions counselor that I got in the first time and also got a half scholarship because I was supporting myself completely at this point. I learned a lot while I was there and the most valuable things were the few friends I made and the dedicated time I took to focus solely on improving my craft. Just having that time to study and be in school really upped my 10,000 hours of mastering my craft. Now there are a lot of downsides to art school that I won't get into, but I would say that if I had to do it again now with all the classes and resources available online, I would probably not go back for formal schooling. So much of school depends on the instructors you have. And let's just say that in a senior term portfolio review, three of the instructors at this school told me that my now best-selling book, Bad Girls Art History, then as the United started in a class, didn't make sense and wasn't going to go anywhere. That book has sold over 300,000 copies and paid off my six-figure student loan. So the lesson here may be to choose your teachers wisely and always consider the source of feedback. Even though there were a lot of not great teachers there, I still had the few really great instructors who encouraged me to keep going even when I wasn't really at the level I wanted to be at yet but it, that was enough encouragement to make me feel not hopeless about a future in art. And I think that's really important. Now with the online resources we have, it's so much easier to find teachers who really speak to you and that really fit your learning style. So while I was in school, I did three internships with creative companies that really gave me the confidence that I could work as an artist. One was an accessories company that ended up getting my work into anthropology. Another was a theme park design company, which I had no idea what they did when I applied for the job. It was through the school career website. Um, but I ended up designing um, like parade floats and rides for the Hello Kitty theme park that is in Shanghai. And so, Doing these internships really opened my eyes to the different ways that my work and being an artist worked in the professional world. Um, and I really loved the bosses I had because they all were mentors in some way or another, even if it wasn't formal. And so I think it's really important to get out there and get work experience in a creative company, which will help you understand your place in capitalism. 
which we all have to live in. After graduating, I worked for a couple companies as a graphic designer, which I also love because I learned so much on the job. Meanwhile, I was moonlighting as a freelance illustrator because I wanted to keep making art. So I got jobs by word of mouth, cold emails to companies and publications I admired, and putting my work on social media, which was really picking up then. I also was teaching myself more skills like painting with gouache the way I wanted to by studying my favorite artists like Mary Blair and Ivan Earl. I also taught myself how to paint better digitally by getting a Cintiq um, and learning from one of my fellow interns at one of my internships. Um, I gave myself a 100 day project that I posted on Tumblr, learning how to digitally paint in Photoshop. Um, you can't find that online anymore because it was terrible. <laughs> but having the dedication to put something online every day, um, having that accountability really helped. So I was also signing up to do craft fairs and comic cons because those gave me a deadline to create new art and so much experience in honing my style and understanding my audience when I was doing the shows because I would learn immediately what people liked and didn't like because even if things were popular online, people may not show up with their dollars for it. And I think one of the key things about becoming a successful artist is really understanding your audience and what they care about. And that really starts with knowing yourself and what you care about. Don't make any work that you don't want to do or sell because that will be the work that you get called for. Just two years into working, I got so busy with freelance work that it was the equivalent of my day job salary and I had to pick one because I barely slept or had a life. I was miserable just working and commuting all the time. I always thought I would work for a large company so this kind of gave me an existential crisis. I'm really social and I enjoy working on a team. I don't really care about the business side of things but then I learned later that I actually love and have an app for business. I just, I think as women, we aren't really taught that we can have a business savvy mind um, and be leaders. And so I didn't really see myself that way. But when push came to shove, I decided to take a leap and bet on myself. I quit my job at Mattel, which I really enjoyed, just as they offered me a raise in promotion right before my 30th birthday. Because while I enjoyed the creative aspects of the job and my coworkers, I didn't love the corporate aspects. So, I had always dreamed of going to Paris for my 30th birthday, so I took myself and my husband there for a week and came back to being my own boss. The only thing I had lined up was a, um, like a designer con, and then I ran into old coworkers there that started giving me freelance jobs, long-term freelance jobs that ended up kind of floating me into this new era. A couple months later, I finally wrote that book proposal for my agent that I'd been putting off. And I sold my first book within a week and was contacted by Disney to showcase in the Wonderground Gallery. These were two of my huge dreams when I started as an artist. And I really believe that when you show the universe that you're ready for this and you're aligned with the path you're meant to be on in this life and you're doing the work to get there, that the doors start to open up. Since then, I've written and illustrated and published four books and over a dozen products, including calendars, oracle decks, planners, and journals with Chronicle Books. I've gotten multi-book deals, had my art featured at the New York Public Library, licensed my art to be in greeting cards, stationery, and apparel, created Facebook stickers that are used internationally on WhatsApp, I've illustrated book covers, worked with Dolly Parton and Jenny Splendid Ice Creams, and designed a whole global Disney by Anne Chen homeline that featured over 30 products with my art on it, and my designs from sketch to final ceramics that sold globally from Japan to Singapore to the UK. I've spoken at colleges, taught at Adobe, I'm a top teacher on Skillshare where you can learn more about my art technique and mentor up and coming artists. Me and my work have been featured by Forbes, Katie Couric, The Cut, Elle, Print Magazine, Hello Giggles, Pop Sugar, and APM Marketplace, among many others. Along the way, I learned that the definition of success was beyond measure of numbers of hitting exterior goals. What I love the most about being an artist is the freedom to determine my own life and destiny and to run a business that's aligned with my values. I also made true friends along the way who support and champion me every step of the way, the way I do them. I get to work from my home studio, travel for inspiration, and work with my favorite clients. I'm lucky to be in a place that, after a decade, I get to be in charge of my own life. This is just a brief overview of my story on how I got to be where I am now as a professional artist. Along the way, there were lots of obstacles and pitfalls, 
There were instructors who told me I couldn't draw, wouldn't critique my work, or straight up threw it in the trash during a crit. There were recruiters who told me I never work for Disney, publishers who didn't understand my books, bad managers at jobs, and former close friends who laughed at my dreams. There are many dark nights of the soul, tears, and breakdowns along the way, too. I hope my story inspires you and that there are so many different ways to get to where you want to be. If you ask any artist, their journey to becoming a professional artist will be different. So I just hope that you know that you are never too old, too small, or too late to be who you're meant to be. Thanks for listening and please subscribe if you like this video. Leave me any more further questions you have in the comments and please take care of each other.